food shelling. Well, November, believe it or not, is Pet Cancer Awareness Month, and as our pets live longer, they become more likely to be diagnosed with cancer. Same thing with humans. The older you are, the higher your risk. Well, joining us with some of the signs and symptoms and treatment is our pet expert, Dr. Sandy Norman. Thanks Hi. for joining us Thank today. You. Uh -huh. you know, this is so tough because, of course, they can't talk to us. Yeah. And they can't say, I hurt. So how do we know that they might, our cats or dogs, might be developing a problem? So we depend on the owner because the owner knows the pet burns. So the one thing I always recommend pet owners, pet their animal every day or every week or sort of feel any unusual lumps and bumps mm -hmm. and then you can tell are they acting abnormally are they disoriented do you notice something are they urinating more are they doing some things are different do you are they seem a little bloated all of the same signs in us and the other problem is we have to depend on you because they can't often say can't tell you anything mm -hmm. so we depend on the owner and observation and and then your own perspective on your pet. You know your pet the best. Are there some breeds that are more susceptible to cancer than others? Absolutely. There are mm -hmm. things like boxers are more susceptible. Golden Retrievers is actually a cancer started going on with Golden mm -hmm. Retrievers. Burmese Mountain Dogs don't live very long. They seem to have trouble with cancer. So there are certain breeds that are more susceptible. And so you should be aware if you have a purebred dog, that's one of the issues. And just like humans, the earlier it's caught, the better the prognosis long term. Absolutely the best. And mm -hmm. that's why we always tell people to go in every year at least to mm -hmm. have your pet look because then your veterinarian will notice things that maybe you don't notice but the early diagnosis always is, is, is going to mean that there's a better chance for a cure or a treatment of some sort. Mm -hmm. And they have all the treatments available to you, radiation, chemotherapy. There are sometimes some studies that will help fund those because they are very expensive. I understand that. But um, it's always early diagnosis. So when you feel that lump, it may not be anything, but you ought to find out what it is. Or if you see something unusual or they find something on the senior x-ray, you ought to have it looked at it make sure that it's not something that because the earlier you can treat or remove it, the more likely you are to get rid of it. Well, and, and the cost really is a concern, and it puts families in a really difficult position because yeah. they have these looming bills and then their beloved pet. Yeah. But you're saying that universities have studies yeah. that, that you can sometimes get your pet involved in, and that helps cover the cost. Yeah, sometimes there are special studies on certain tumors at certain universities, maybe not the closest one, but you can use those. That'll help fund those, and that's important because that's always part of the research that goes into human cancers. Remember, humans and pets share the same cancers because we live in the same environment, so we oftentimes share cancers. So sometimes you get on some of those. And then the other good thing, of course, is if you have pet insurance. And that's something you can buy when they're young. And it does help fund some of this expensive treatment later on in life. All right. Some good reminders. Just make sure we're petting our, our <laughs> yeah. pets every Loving day. our pets. There's a good reason to love hug your pets. Yes. Multiple <laughs> reasons. All right. Dr. Sandy Norman, thanks for joining us live this noon.